Kevin Jackson Radio Show. What's up, everybody? Kevin Jackson. I said Kevin's cousin. I ain't going to lie. It's Kevin's cousin talking to y'all. Y'all know the difference between Kevin and me because I'm a little more ghetto than Kevin. Anyway, glad you guys are here. <laughs> it's Kevin Jackson Show, KJRadio.com. Hey, you know, everybody talked about the Congressional Black Caucus were stoic when Donald Trump was reading off the numbers, unemployment numbers for blacks, lowest unemployment outside of the Democrats in the 1860s who had full black employment. <laughs> if you know what I'm saying, right? Okay. All right. Y'all with me? Okay. Anyway, uh, so there was one member of the Congressional Black Caucus who actually did clap. One man who stood against the green, went against the green, Florida Representative Al Lawson was seen clapping for Trump, for Donald Trump after the comments about the success of the economy, specifically black unemployment. Cameras immediately turned to the group during this speech. I wish they had just left the cameras on these black clowns so people could see them. All this good news, good news for black people, and they said nothing. Since the election, Trump said, we have created 2.4 million new jobs, including 200,000 new jobs in manufacturing alone. After years of wage stagnation, we are finally seeing rising wages. Unemployment claims have hit a 45 year low. Black unemployment, he said African American, but I don't say that, stands at the lowest rate ever recorded, and Hispanic American unemployment has also reached the lowest levels in history. Outside of that little slavery thing that the Democrats don't like to talk about too much. You get what I'm saying, people? Lawson said, Stranger, he clapped. Woo! Yes, sir. Way to go. I don't know what's going to happen to him. He might get beat by Massa, you know. Plantation, these, these, these white folks don't play, man. These white Democrats do not play. Lawson, they say, has serving, been serving in Florida's 5th Congressional District since 2017. So he's new. He's new to the plantation. He doesn't realize it. He's been a free-range Negro for too long. Prior to that, he served in Florida's legislature. 28 years. So here's what, here are the numbers. Roughly 480,000 black people received new jobs in 2017. Almost half a million colored folks went back to work. And I'm not talking about driving Miss Daisy. I'm not talking about ironing and doing the laundry of white people. I'm talking about jobs, baby. One of my good buddies, IT guy, his name is Chris. Chris was on him. He lost his job in 2016 under Obama. He got rehired in 2017. Trump got elected. Chris wasn't out of a job. A month. Boop. Got a new job. New J. Only thing wrong with it, he says he works with like 85% black women. And he's in IT. And he says, man, the language that comes out of these women's mouths would blow your mind. He, I, I should get, just have him record one day, you know, just walk around one of those hot mics. Say, kid, check it out. Anyway, half, almost half a million black folks went back to work in 2017 under Donald Trump. Yep. I'd love to see what those numbers were the final year under Barack Obama. I'd love to see it every year that Barack Obama was in place. Because I'm going to tell you something. We're going to get more jobs in 2018 than we got in 2017. 2.4 million jobs created in 2017. I'm going to make a prediction. I'm going to predict that we hit 3 million jobs created in the year 2018. I don't even know what the numbers are. Have we? Because I don't think we would even have January numbers. I believe there was a, a, a hiring in January that was second to none. It's probably going to be the best month of Trump's presidency because December, it's all seasonal workers. In January, people are saying, hey, we're feeling good. You know, we, we got to get cranking up again, ready for the new year. Boom, they start hiring. I'm going to bet you that we, no, I'm just going to get a number. Let me put a number on So, Because in order to get to 3 million, we have to do a quarter million every month, 250,000. I'm going to predict 280 to 300,000 in January. That's my prediction. Then February being a short month, and of course, in honor of black history, 
uh, I'm going to have to cut that number down a little bit. 280,000 jobs in February. I'm just get, I'm, I'm putting these out there early guessing in March. I believe I can fly. No, I believe March will be 300,000 again. That's what I'm, those are my, that, what you want me to go farther? I'm not going any farther than that. I'm like Trump. If I predict any farther and I get it wrong, then you won't, you won't, you'll dismiss it. If I miss it by a thousand, you'll be Kevin. It didn't get to 300,000. It only got to 299,000. So that's what leftists do. They listen to the program. Don't fool yourself. Anyway, one man, Al Lawson stood, stood strong, clapped, said, yes, those are good numbers. Why should I not be happy that black people in my district are going back to work? Who Does it matter who's in office? It, let me put it to you this way. If Barack Obama had read that off, what would the Congressional Black Caucus have done? Anybody, somebody help me. Give me a rag. I feel like I'm starting to sweat when I preach. What would he have done? What would the Congressional Black Caucus? They would have been standing up, clapping and cheering like a bunch of trained monkeys. I could say that I'm authentically black. I got my DNA right here, baby. 79%. Yeah, 21% white. Whatever. Even if you subtract it, I'm still more black than white. So if you take my 79, subtract 21, you get 58. I'm still black. What? What? What you got to say? So look, you know what would have happened. These people would have been cheering. The media would have been touted. Barack Obama, good for black people. Look at what he's done for blacks in his first year. It wouldn't have even been racial. They would have just said, everyone's achieving. Look at this. The black man comes in and he helps his people. This is why we voted for him. Donald Trump is giving black people jobs, opportunity, taking them off welfare, giving them, what did he call it? You know, because when you work, you feel good. The pride of work, right? Giving that to 480,000 more black folks who can pay their bills, pay their own way, moving up in careers. And they call him a racist and don't even recognize it. If Obama had done it, he'd be getting awards. Y'all know it. Y'all know it. I don't have to get all crazy up in here. I don't need the choir. (laughs) I heard the Lord. Kevin Jackson, who you listen to, folks, will be back in just a minute. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177 or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com Beth Cook Moranville author of Closer Than Your Breath A Book of Hope Hope, that wonderful, wonderful four letter word that you may feel completely out of I wrote this book to give you great hope. It's not too late. If fetal position is an all too familiar place for you, I understand. If the next 60 seconds are too long, this book is for you. Wherever you are right now, whether you're dealing with divorce or death or sickness, take hope. You are going to make it through this pain. Don't roll your eyes. I've walked this road and I know it. The best is yet to come. Closer Than Your Breath, a book of hope from author and speaker Beth Cook Moranville can be found on Amazon.com or Kindle.com. For more information, visit CloserThanYourBreath.com or on Facebook at Closer Than Your Breath. 